So this is essentially the second mini PC that I introduced on this channel, and that is because they are a little more difficult to come by. The last one I tested has a core i9 TPU with 8 cores and 16 threads to show off. This one is much more modest, but it can do a surprising amount of things. Not to mention that it is definitely worth the money for everything that it can do. So introducing the Camry AK1 Plus mini PC. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now the exterior design consists of plastic and the build definitely isn't perfect as it uses more lightweight plastic and the power button feels a little bit cheap, but it is perfectly fine. If anything, it is just nitpicking for a machine that will be completely stationary. And speaking of which, we are looking at a very small PC, that is for sure, and I do like that quite a bit. When it comes to ports, we are looking at four USB-A ports with three of them being USB 3 and the other one being USB 2. Two HDMI ports, an Ethernet port, a power connector, a headphone jack, and a Kensington lock. When you power this machine on, you do get this rather nice blue light to adorn your setup quite nicely. Overall, I do like how this PC looks and I can appreciate the I.O. as well. So when it comes to specs, which is going to be the next important factor, we are looking at a PC with an Intel N9 95 CPU, which is a quad core quad thread CPU running at 1.7 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and this machine is in fact running on Windows 11 Pro. So the specs are interesting to look at here. We have a relatively large SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have a very low end CPU to accompany this machine. So what can this machine ultimately accomplish with this hardware? This device, for one, can easily be used as a media machine, and it is a very solid media machine at that, considering that it can stream movies and TV shows perfectly fine from every streaming service that I have used to this point. Hulu, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, etc. are all going to work just fine. So if you wanted this computer to also be a solid media machine, then there you have it. There is no doubt that it can handle these tasks. This isn't a demanding task, but there are streaming specific devices out there that just don't get the job done. So I wanted to report on how well this would do as a media machine even though it's probably not that necessary to mention. Now let's go ahead and talk about PC gaming. For one, it is important to acknowledge that this machine will not be able to run any of the emulators that I want to use with it, at least not most of them. This is a huge shame, but it will just have to do. But same as before, there are going to be missing DLL files no matter how many times I reinstall the emulators. So at this point, I do believe that it could just be an issue with Windows 11. So in this case, we will only be testing Steam games and considering that this is a lower end machine, we'll just have to be content with what we can get out of it. I'll be testing lower end games while pushing it a little more later. So let's dive right in. Hollow Knight will be the first game that we test out today. This game will run quite well at 1080p medium settings and even with a 60 FPS steady frame rate. So I was surprised to see how well this runs here as the CPU is one that I am not very familiar with, so it is very interesting to see. Now with that said, it is refreshing to see a budget device like this being able to do some PC gaming even if there are going to be some limits as we will see very shortly, but this is capable of a lot more than I expected, with the right settings of course. Next is Persona 4 Golden, and while it is actually a little difficult to crack 60 FPS on this machine, we do get a very stable 30 FPS, so I can't really complain that much. Honestly, it's really good here as I can play in 1080p with medium settings and still get pretty good performance here. This is one of those games that will give you a lot of playtime for very little, so I can easily appreciate that they have done what they have done here. Persona 4 Golden runs quite well and I'm very glad that we do get this kind of performance with very little to sacrifice along the way. So awesome job here as well. Octopath Traveler is a game that I expected more difficulties out of, and I was right to do so. This game is more demanding for sure, and it definitely shows in how it forced me to crank down the settings to between low and medium at 720p. It's not that big of a compromise for a game that is already inherently pixelated, so it's not that big of a deal. The game still looks beautiful, and it still runs fairly well on the CPU with the proper settings. I'm actually surprised that this can play it as well as, as it can. Now, with that said, I'm very interested in seeing how it will handle the next game on this list. Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is a game that I haven't touched in so long, yet I'm so happy to see that it runs as well as it does on a machine like this. Oblivion runs quite well at medium settings and at 720p, as it is completely playable and it still looks as hideous as I remember. This game does have some nice vistas for sure, of course, but 
but the characters have always looked awful and I still hang on to that memory dearly. So yes, this game runs pretty well on this machine, and I wouldn't discount it for being a lower end system. This also surprised me. However, for the next test, I want to say, I can't really say that I have too much hope left for it. And you will understand why in literally just a moment. Now, this is the most demanding game that I test out here, and this is Dark Souls Remastered. It's not really playable. At the lowest settings, with everything turned off, and at 720p, the game still runs very slowly, as if it were in slow motion. I had to lower the resolution to 600p in order to get playable performance, but even then, the game looks pretty bad, so I wouldn't really bother at this point. Something like Dark Souls Remastered just won't really be playable here, but that's okay because I wanted to see what the threshold was for how far I could push the system. It's not playable, but the game does run for sure, so that counts for something, I'd say. Now let's go ahead and take a quick breather to play Final Fantasy X. I had to lower the resolution to 720p, medium to low settings for mostly everything, and I turned off anti-aliasing because I didn't think that it would be necessary here. And after doing these things, I got pretty good performance. Everything had very smoothly ran, and I had no issues with the performance at all. So it is good to see that I can still play PlayStation 2 era games on a device like this totally fine. Frankly, as long as it can match the games that the Switch can play for the most part, then I'm okay with it. When it comes to this machine, Final Fantasy X ran pretty well with the right adjustment. Now, obviously I don't recommend using this as an editing machine, just as a quick side note, because it just doesn't have the processing power for that. Now, in conclusion, this machine is much more capable than I was expecting, and I'm actually really happy with it. As long as you can also keep your expectations in check, then I think you will really like this machine. Remember that we are working with a budget of roughly $259, and as of the making of this video, it is on sale for $199, which I think is a great price for something like this. So if you weren't sure, and the price is enticing, but you have the doubts about the performance, and you can rest assured that this is a capable little machine. It definitely won't play PlayStation 3 titles and above all that well, but it is a fantastic indie machine without a doubt. It can also play a lot of games that I still really like. So with that said, I can strongly recommend it. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end, because I do always appreciate that. Now I am going to be leaving affiliate links down below to Amazon, because I was able to find this on Amazon. So please make sure to use my affiliate links, because you would be helping out the channel quite a lot. So I would really appreciate that as well, if you were to use our affiliate links, because it helps us get more review units. Also, I like to post uh, shorter versions of these reviews over on TikTok, so please make sure to follow me over there. Links down below. Uh, I like to keep things pretty concise over there, usually at around one minute, but I am trying to get a following there too, so please make sure to follow me there as well. Now, with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a good one, and enjoy.